All right, folks, this is Jim Dupree, back with another video on trying to help you get through Ammo 62. So what I'm gonna talk about today is how to fill out a 2890 for land transportation of explosives. Now, most of this is gonna transpose into vessel transportation as well. Uh, and I'll mention what that is as we kind of go along in the video. So for our example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to page 54 of your orange handout. We're just gonna use that item as an example to go through and, and fill out this shipping paper. So if you'll take a minute, go to page 54, you should be looking at this item, this ammunition smoke. If you're not, if, if you've got a different version, if this video is kind of kind of lagged behind and the, and the version's updated a little bit, then just look at the example here, take a picture of it, take a screenshot of it, and you can kind of walk through it with me. The, the, the premises in this video will still be just as good years from now. So. Here we go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna ship 10 boxes of this ammunition smoke. Uh, and like all shipping papers, doesn't matter what I'm doing, I'm gonna fill out three basic pieces of information on every single shipping paper. I'm gonna fill out my basic description, I'm gonna fill out my type and quantity packaging, and I'm gonna fill out my emergency response information. So we're gonna start with the basic description. And for ammo, it's, it's gonna be right on the box for us. So we're gonna have our UN number, UN 0303, proper shipping name right beside the UN number. It's going to be ammunition smoke. And then on the label, we can clearly read this is a 1.4 ball. And so that takes care of the basic description. The most time consuming part is going to be my quantity. So let's talk about quantity. We need the number of packages first. That's easy. We got 10 boxes. Then we need to know the net quantity. For this, we're gonna have two numbers. We're gonna have the net explosive weight and the number of rounds. I wanna talk about the number of rounds in a minute. Let's cover the net explosive weight. So we got 10 boxes. We multiply, multiply that times five grenades in each box. Then we're gonna multiply that times the net explosive weight, and we're gonna pull that out of the JCS. So this was a hotel 035 and that's 187787. Net explosive weight in kilograms. So times 0.187787. Then we grab our trusty calculator, or, or we can do the stubby pencil if we wanted to get cute. So we'll apply 10 boxes times five rounds in each of those boxes. Now that's gonna give us 50 rounds. And then we're gonna multiply that times point 187787 787. and that's going to give us 9.389935 kilograms of net explosive weight. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, Mr. Dupree, how do I round that off? My answer is, don't. Put what the calculator says. Can I round it? Yes. Do I have to round it? No. How you round it if you choose to, there's really no regulatory standard for that. There's no regulation you can point to. Most of the time in class, we're gonna ask you to round that to the third digit. And then if that third digit is anything up to zero, other than zero, we're gonna ask you to round it up. The reason we do that is not because that meets a legal standard. We do that just to make sure you're multiplying the right numbers together. That's all, okay? Now, if you are shipping by land in a government-owned vehicle, you're taking ammunition, you're putting in the back of your Humvee. You're taking your ammunition, you're putting in the back of your five ton. You're taking your ammunition and you're putting it in a government pickup truck that has government plates on it. That's a government vehicle, right? Then I am also required to put the number of rounds. So in this case, I've got 10 boxes. I've got five rounds per box, which means I am shipping 50 rounds. And we add that, no big deal. Don't need this if I'm going by commercial means, right? Only need this if I'm going by a government vehicle. Now, let's transition over to gross weight. So the gross weight is going to be just like non-ammunition, no difference here. So we're gonna multiply the number of boxes, which was 10, times the gross weight per box in pounds, 16, times the conversion factor of 0.454. Now, that 454 is only used to move gross weight in pounds into kilograms, and it stays the same. It is the same all the time for gross weight, and we really don't use it anywhere else. 
So to do that math, we just multiply 10 times 16. And again, 16 was our gross weight that was on the box. And we'll multiply that times 0.454, and then boom, we've got 72.64 pounds, or kilograms, excuse me. Say that right. Again, how do we round that? My answer is, you don't. There's no reason to. You don't have to. If you want to round it, knock yourself out. Will not hurt a thing. So now we've got all of our quantities, and we've got our basic description. Only thing we've got left to deal with is our emergency response. Now, that's going to come in twofold. That's going to be a telephone number and an ERG guide number. Now, telephone number, we're just going to circle the emergency response number for explosives. Easy. Now, if we had explosives and non-explosives on this, we would have to write it under each one, but we don't. For our additional handling, for our emergency response guide, we're going to put ERG, and this comes out of the orange handout. So we've got to put an emergency response guide number attached. Now, you may or may not remember this, but explosives only have two ERG guides. You've got 112, guide 112, and that covers 1.1s, 1.2s, 1.3s, and 1.5s. And then you've got guide 114 that covers 1.4s and 1.6s. We've got a 1.4, so that is 1.14. The reason that there are only two emergency response guides for explosives because there are only two emergency response procedures. Get back and get way back, right? 114 says get back. 112 says get way back, okay? Now, that means that we have got our emergency response, basic description, type of quantity of packaging. That's it. Now, typically, we're going to have to look at this again and look for, for our additional information. Um, we're looking for RQ, look for inhalation hazard, look for technical name. None of those things apply to ammunition articles. So our items in the JCS, we're not going to have to worry about those things, right? So not, not something we have to look at for ammo. One thing I will point out, when you're doing your calculations here, make sure they make sense, right? Kilograms, we got 72 kilograms. Does it make sense that 10 boxes would weigh about 72 kilograms, right? So I can double that, and that's how many pounds there are. So 140 pounds, does that make sense for 10 boxes? Yeah, I would say it does. Kilograms, so my kilograms, net, my net. Make sure that your net is lower than your gross. You can't have more net than you have gross, right? Remember, your gross weight is the weight of the package and everything. The net weight is just the weight of the explosive. And so your gross weight should always be higher than your net weight. Just double check those calculus. Do it twice. Make sure everything's good. Those points count a lot on the test. Make sure you get them right. So hope this video helps you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me in the comments and email. Uh, feel, reach, feel, feel free to reach out to me at, at my email address. Um, james.r.dupree.civ at uh, army.mil and we'll answer your questions about the class. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this video is helpful to you.